Today I'm going to tell you how I came to Christ in Seattle. But the journey started in State College. Before I left State College in January uh, 2004, I was very close to accepting Jesus as my Lord. But there was one obstacle. It's my pride. I thought I could achieve anything with my work. So I came to um, my pastor to ask him many questions about Christian identity. So I like all the teachings in the Bible, but the bottom line is I cannot convince that God is real and Christ is God. So because of my pride, I refuse to confess that I'm a sinner, let alone submit myself to anyone's lordship. So um, my pastor encouraged me at the end of conversation that Tell Christ, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. So soon after I got to Seattle, just two weeks, I was hospitalized. And a pastor from the local Chinese church came to visit me and pray for me. I found an English Bible in my room, so I started to read it seriously for the first time with a desire to know more about Christ. So when the oncologist came to my room to tell me the diagnosis from the bone marrow test, leukemia, I was surprisingly calm. Had I not known Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, I would have been frightened to death. At that moment, I knew Jesus Christ the one I heard about from the Bible study and from sermons was not just a historical figure. He was God. He was the one who promises peace to all his believers. So I felt this supernatural peace beyond any words of description. Because Jesus promised that, and that was true. So the next time, the same pastor came to visit me and asked me if I was ready to accept Jesus' invitation. I said yes. The chemotherapy was awful. Um, I counted the days left of the week-long chemo so that the discomfort would end, but it didn't. I never thought I was a picky eater till the chemo took away my appetite. The food I used to love tasted like wax in my mouth. My skin peeled off like the old paint from war. I felt so itchy, but I dare not scratch for fear of cuts. The prescription cream didn't bring me the relief I expected. So I had a fever that ran for a week long. So every day I saw tubes of blood drawn out of my body for blood test. Finally, at the end of the week, they found a very rare kind of bacteria. So the doctor gave me the right antibiotics to bring my temperature to normal. Then I was able to be dismissed to home. So it took me a long time to recover so that it was time for the second round of chemo. But I didn't really want to go through the process again. I couldn't bear the thought of going through that. I was very ready for the first round because I knew it was the only way to save me, save my life from cancer. I heard about side effects of chemo, but that was only head knowledge. Now I had experienced it. I dreaded it. I knew I would take as many rounds of chemo as my oncologist prescribed, but I really didn't want to. Suddenly, I found the answer to my own question. Since Jesus Christ knew he was about to rise in the third day, what's so significant about his death on the cross? I found the answer to my own question. The chemotherapy, the experience, the taste of death allowed me to have a glimpse of Jesus' agony on the cross. Like the criminal hanging on the cross next to Christ, 
We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. I deserve the suffering brought by the chemo because of the cancer cells in my body. But Jesus did not commit anything to deserve the most humiliating and painful death on the cross. Jesus suffered on the cross as a perfect atonement for my sins so that I do not have to suffer eternally. Being 100% divine and 100% human, he was fully aware of the suffering on the cross. He prayed to God if it's possible to take that cup away, but he submitted to God's will by yielding up his life, by giving up his life for me. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Christ was pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. And by his wounds, we are healed. And that is a promise, I claim. Although we are not always healed physically, God always heals our souls as we cry out to him. So Christ, my Lord, gave me a new identity. I'm a Christian, meaning follower of Christ, not a Christian chin. That's a word I made up. Follower of Christian. So I received a lot of help from my Christian friends. I'm very grateful to them. But my ultimate gratitude goes to Christ, who loves me more than anyone else does on the earth. Because of Christ's unconditional love, my friends poured out their love to me, which I cannot possibly return. What I can do is to be a channel of love to those at the receiving end. I agree with a pastor who says, the best gift we can give to others is leading them to Christ or bringing them to know more, of, know more about Christ through our godly lifestyle and active witness. So soon after my first chemo ended, I did not only lose my hair, my face was so swollen and disfigured that I couldn't recognize myself in the mirror. I didn't want any visitor to see me like that. I called my husband, asking him not to visit me that day. But he came anyway, bless his heart. I never thought I would care much about my experience till that moment. Two months later, I did a thing I never thought I would do, taking off my wig to show my semi-bald head. When I saw a woman at the door of the clinic uh, store, at the doctor's office, worrying about losing her hair because she was about to receive a chemo, I showed her the one millimeter hair that was growing on my head to assure her that her hair would grow back too. I kept talking with her without my fig, uh, wig on. The power of Holy Spirit within me caused me to be bold. I invited her to my Bible study group and she accepted the invitation. When I left State College, I only had had knowledge of Christ, but I was allowed to experience Christ's love and faithfulness in my suffering. And, I, and as a result, I knew Christ better and I saw my sin much more clearly. I was humbled and I knew Christ's love and intimate presence like never before. There's such sweetness in sorrow, such a peace even in pain, because we experience the loving arms of Jesus holding us and caring for us. When I came back to State College in 2006, I have learned to soak in scripture through the help of some in-depth Bible study programs, and I have learned to hold fast to God's characters and praise Him. I'm thankful that I did not stop pursuing Christ after I was healed. Otherwise, I would be like the seeds fell on rocky areas where the soil was was shallow. I would have sprung up quickly but withered soon because of no root. I'm able to pursue Christ because of the community he put me in so that I get support 
where whenever I am weak. So many people in my life prepared the way for me to see Christ as my Lord. How do you prepare the way for others to see Christ as their Lord? What truth of Christ could you share with someone who does not believe? Many people prayed faithfully for me, including those whom I don't even know to this date. I'm so thankful for many people who pray with me. Whom have God put to your mind to pray for and with? Thank you very much. <laughs>